say you're Sergio already. I don't know if you're Sergio. Sergio. I know, dude. They keep following me Sergio in the comments. Don't worry. Sergio? Yes. Dude. You don't even look like a Sergio, bro. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Vita Culture? I'm Adrian Barone, and we're back with another tutorial. Today, we got my boy Omar here on the chair. We're gonna be running down the steps on how to do a shadow fade. Real timeless and real versatile look. It's basically a fade with a half on the sides. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly shout out our merch. I will leave a link down in the description below, fadedculture.co, feel free to check it out. With that said, give this video a thumbs up, share it with one of your barber buddies, and let's jump right into it. All right, guys, thank y'all for tuning in to another tutorial. And shout outs to those who have been buying our merch at fadedculture.co. It's very much appreciated, guys. Thank y'all. Now, to begin this tutorial, we're going to start by combing the hair in its natural position. You want to make sure that you are combing according to the cowlick. And a quick tip I have for y'all when it comes to trimming the top is I do add a few drops of leave-in conditioner into my water and what that's going to do is just going to help keep moisture in the hair a little bit longer. Here I'm just grabbing my front section and as I'm moving on to the side make sure that you are grabbing some of the hair that you previously cut alongside with a new section to use as a guideline. Take your time and try to use small horizontal sections. And if you do a lot of shear work in the barbershop, I suggest that you use the shears in this manner. It's basically just keeping a very neutral position on the wrist. And you always want to cross check your work. Now we're going to come in vertical sections. And as far as to start connecting the top to the sides, I always do vertical sections, but if the client for whatever reason wants a ton of weight, then we'll go ahead and do block graduation. And that's basically just gonna leave a lot of more weight on the parietal ridge. But like I said, for this, for this particular haircut, we're gonna go ahead and do vertical sections. Now to begin this shadow fade, you're going to want to start with the clipper no guard and lever fully open. Make sure that you are starting at that temple peak area and work your way all the way back evenly all around. Try to stay soft with your guidelines as it will be a lot easier when we work our way down and start to erase them. And with our number one guard lever still fully open, we're going to go ahead and create our second guideline and we're going to take that up about an inch or so. Just make sure that you are running parallel to the one underneath it, that way your fade is consistent throughout. Again, just make sure that you are flicking out as you approach the top of your guideline. 
just to make it a lot softer. Now with the number two guard lever still completely open, we're gonna go ahead and create our third guideline. Notice as I am coming straight out from the head and I'm not digging in as if you do dig in, it will create more of a faux hawk look. Now with our number three guard lever still completely open, as you can see, I, now I am just exaggerating that flick out motion just to ensure that I'm not digging in. And if you were easy enough with that number two, it should fade right into this number three. But this number three will be the last card that we're going to use. After this, we're just going to use clipper over comb technique to help blend in the sides to the top. And if you're new to clipper over comb, I highly suggest that you either start with the lever completely open or even slap the number one guard on there just to use as a safety net so you don't cut too much off at a time. And something I do in all my haircuts is I freehand the frizz. As you can see here, I'm using my pinky for support. By now you should have the first guideline that we created with the half and the second that we created with the one and a half. We're going to start with that one and work our way down. Using the number one and a half guard, we're going to close the lever just slightly putting it into a three fourths position. It's basically somewhere in between the half and fully open and using mainly the corners of the clipper we're going to attack that top guideline. And like I said, there is only two guidelines with this particular cut because if you were easy enough with that number two, it should have blended right into that number three. Now for our first initial guideline, we're going to use the half guard and we're going to leave the lever in that same three fourths position and begin to fade that one away. And this half guard is creating a faint line right above it, but do not take this step any higher as we will come back right now with the one guard and remove that faint line that this guard is creating. Like I mentioned, now we're gonna use that number one guard we're still going to leave the lever in that 3 fourths position and using mainly the corners of the clipper we're going to attack that faint line that the half guard created. Quick guys, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, a platform that I strongly stand behind. I've been using them for quite a while now. I've gained some new knowledge on photography, editing and even productivity because of this platform. A topic I would recommend would be iPhone Photography by Dell McManus. I feel a lot of y'all will benefit from this course because you can then use the photography skills to advertise your work on Instagram or whatever platform you use. Check this one out and Sean Dalton's course on Lightroom Editing. I know y'all are going to gain something from these guys. I made sure they hook y'all up so the first thousand people to click the link down in the description will get a free month trial guys. Check it out. Now back to this tutorial. Now for any touch up work I usually start with my half guard lever completely open and then from there just play with the lever. Close it slightly or close it all the way but that's just going to vary from client to client and even from one side of the head to the other. And when it comes to this shadow fade the client obviously does have the option to line up the back or taper it out. For this case, we're going to go ahead and taper it out. In my opinion, it does look a lot cleaner. We're going to start with the lever completely closed, make our first guideline, and then make our second guideline with our lever halfway. And we're going to remove that bottom guideline 
with the lever completely closed but this time just using mainly the corners of the clipper. And now to remove the second guideline, same thing. We're basically removing it with the same lever position that we initially put it in, but now we're just using the corners of the clipper. And then I use my trimmer at the very, very bottom just to remove all the peach fuzz and the rest of the neck hair. And wherever I use my trimmer, I'm gonna follow that by using my electric shaver now, just to get a lot closer to the scalp. Now to begin the lineup work, you can either start from the top or the back and the bottom and then just connect it as you meet in the middle. And again, they do have the option to square out the sideburns, but for this particular case, we're going to go ahead and taper it out as well with the same technique that we use on the neckline. And yes, my trimmers are zero gapped as well. I zero gap all my clippers, guys, and I highly suggest y'all try that as well. Now to remove all his facial hair, I always mention going the extra mile and asking your client what they want to do with their facial hair and remove any excess nose hair or ear hair that they might have and even ask them if they want to do anything to the eyebrows, guys. As for the facial hairs, you can see right here, I'm trying to feel in the direction that the grain is going just to make sure that I am cutting against it. And another tip I have for y'all is I do wet the skin a little bit before I apply the shave gel. It's basically just going to prolong the moisture of the shave gel. And I begin by shaving with the grain and follow that by shaving against the grain, guys. And always using your opposite hand to help stretch the skin to ensure a softer shave. And along with the neck duster, I do use my blow dryer just to make sure that I remove all the hair and as much hair as I possibly can from the client. Here I'm just going to rub a little bit of matte pomade in him. Make sure that you are emulsifying that pomade as much as you can, that way you don't have no clumps of product in his hair. Here's the before in case y'all forgot. And here's after guys, a shadow fade with a scissor trim on top. I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial guys. Let us know down in the comments below what y'all would like for us to do next. As always, thank y'all so much for tuning in. If you made it to the end, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Till next time, peace.